I'm Superman, he's Batman. Are those last names? Just one name each. Like Madonna. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso. And I've previously spoke about the other Lego Batman movie. But today, I'm here to talk about the other... Other Lego Batman movie. Yes, there is another. Uh, another. Sort of. Kind of. Well, you know, we'll get into that in a minute. What's really interesting is that this Lego Batman movie isn't tied into THE Lego Batman movie, or, or even the other Lego Batman movie. This one is a separate Lego Batman movie. Yes, some of the models may look the same, and some of the characters may even be voiced by some of the same actors, but make no mistake, this is its own Lego Batman movie. Lego Batman The Movie DC Superheroes Unite. What a complicated title for such a basic Batman story. Uh, although what's less basic is trying to identify what this movie is. At first, I was shocked that I never heard about this before. But then I was even more shocked when I learned what exactly this movie was. This movie, in actuality, is a series of in-game scenes from the video game Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Except, where gameplay was, is now replaced with new scenes added to fill those slots. So this is basically the same experience as that game, minus the fun of actually playing it. And I've never played that game, so I can't really compare and contrast these two. But I imagine something more interactive would have probably been more entertaining. What I think is most interesting about this alleged movie is its voice cast. It's clear that this is a Batman for a much younger audience, so they didn't really need to go out of their way to get the heavy hitters, but they did anyway. Clancy Brown is once again lending his dark and menacing vocals to the role of Lex Luthor, reprising his one-of-a-kind performance from Superman the Animated Series, as well as the Justice League shows. I mean, this guy just brings such a powerful performance to a 3D animated plastic construction toy. Troy Baker once again plays the gruff-sounding Man of Two Minds, Two-Face, returning to the role that he played in the Arkham series. And much like Clancy Brown, there isn't a major difference in his portrayal of the character there and his portrayal of the character here. Neither one of these two actors has toned down their performance to better suit a movie about building blocks. They feel all too real and adult in this fictional kids movie. And I'm gonna be real with you. It feels really strange and off-putting hearing these very serious and mature-sounding performances once again coming out of building blocks. This would be like if Shakespeare was read by Fisher-Price people. They feel more than just a little bit out of place. That's not to say anything bad about the actors portraying them, it's because what I'm really saying is, is that they're too good for the material that they're given. Troy Baker is also once again playing Batman just as he did in Family Matters. And like he did in Family Matters, he's kinda acting like a dick. Grayson. I know I sorta tiptoed around this performance in my Batman Family Matters review, but at least then I could. In here, it's much more blatantly obvious how much of a jerk the Dark Knight is. But what's really puzzling is I'm not sure what they were going for here, because there are multiple instances of him acting stuck up or generally rude. And it's not even played for laughs, it's just... Played. He shuts down Robin time and time again. He gives Superman the super cold shoulder on multiple occasions, and he's just overall hard to love. I'm not sure who made the call to make Batman unlikable, but suffice it to say, it was a really bad call. In comparison to the rest of the rogues gallery, the Joker voice in this feels much more appropriate for what this movie is. As a PG outing, this Joker feels much more zany and wacky and in line with the Joker from the 1960s show. Although I will say Rob Paulson makes for a really, really good Riddler, and I would not mind seeing him utilized in the role again to a greater capacity. I would very much like to see that. Unlike in the Lego Batman movie, which gives us an orphan that looks like Carrie Kelly but has the name of the first boy wonder, and also unlike Batman Family Matters, which gave us Damian Wayne as Robin, Jason Todd as Red Hood, and Dick Grayson as Nightwing, this time around, it's Tim Drake in the Robin role. 
and he's portrayed almost like a combination of the Robins from the other two LEGO films. He's eager and over-energized like Damien, but is desperate to prove himself like his LEGO Batman counterpart. In terms of story, it's a pretty standard setup. Joker and Lex Luthor team up to go after their arch nemesises, Batman and Superman. Nemesises? Nemesi? Nemesi. Never mind, let me move on. One group bonds and learns how to work together as a team, while the other is consumed by infighting. Throw in a giant Joker mech in a last minute Justice League cameo, and that's it. That's the movie. You have experienced all there is to experience. When I say this movie is really basic, I mean not only in terms of plot, but also in terms of its depiction of its characters. Everyone is very one note. It's like they took one perception of the characters and made that one perception the character. A lot of these guys are boiled down to one quality apiece. And that's the ones who were lucky enough to have that. That's development for some characters. On top of that, I don't think they did a really great job in explaining the dynamics of this universe. There's never a pairing that feels particularly interesting or noteworthy. Absolutely none of the interactions are memorable. I don't think any of the core dynamics have dynamics. Batman is vaguely annoyed by Superman. Lex Luthor is very annoyed by the Joker. And that's it. That's all you get. Nothing really happens. And that's really how I feel about the movie. And nothing really happens. Now I want to make this clear, I'm talking exclusively about the movie in my critiques. The game could be a completely different experience. Yes, they share the same skin, but their innards are completely different. Maybe more authentic and character-developing moments occurred during gameplay. Maybe more memorable lines were spoken and characters were better established in dialogue when the player is playing. Maybe these relationships and dynamics were more fleshed out with a controller. Or, maybe the game is the exact same and I should take it at face value because ultimately this was a game made for kids and this is a movie made for a game made for kids. All of those things are very possible. I don't know. I can't speak on the video game's behalf. But in terms of the movie's adaptation of the video game, yeah, I don't know, not so great. The last 10 minutes of the film do have a really surprising jump in quality though. The Joker's Transformer vs. the Justice League is the obvious highlight of the movie, no question. And the eventual Brainiac stinger at the end? I can't help but love because he is in fact one of my favorite Superman characters. I will say, I didn't expect to mildly enjoy myself by the end of the movie. But there was definitely a turnaround in like the last 10 minutes or so. It was a fun fitting end. But I just don't know if the hour getting there was worth it. What really astounds me here is that this game was thought so fondly of that they decided to piece together cutscenes and call it a movie. I mean, this game is in fact a sequel. There was another Lego Batman movie in the lineup, but where's that one's adaptation? You don't see anyone making a movie based on the game, based on a toy brand, based on a cartoon comic book character for that entry in the series, now do you? Right, they went right to Lego Batman 2. Like, they must have really, really believed in this product and thought the general public needed to see this story play out. They needed to break past the gaming market and reach out to regular consumers, everyday Joes and Jills, to come see this Batman extravaganza. But the truth of the matter is, it's meh. It's just, it's just very meh. This Lego Batman movie is inoffensively dull and bland in its presentation. It was hard to engage with. And yeah, it's definitely geared to a much younger audience that I'm not a part of, but that doesn't really speak for quality, now does it? Batman Family Matters was geared toward that same audience, maybe arguably an even younger one, and I still found that to be a worthwhile watch. This one, well, this one just didn't do it for me. I don't think this is a bad movie by any means, but I think it's unforgivingly forgettable. It was hard for me to try to get invested in this, but... I don't think it's a slap in the face to the source or insulting to its fanbase. This is harmless enough for a baby's first Batman. I think if you're a big Batman fan, then there's a little fun to be had here in the subtle nods they make to other continuities. Like having Batman fight off a shark while dangling from a ladder of a helicopter? Where have I seen that before? Or when the movie parodies direct lines of dialogue from the 1989 Batman movie? Having Lex Luthor once again run for president? But my personal favorite moment had to come when Batman and Superman switched Lego parts to assume each other's identity, as has been done many times over. And there's even this one funny line of dialogue which I completely relate to. Robin's still around. If we eliminate Batman, Robin will probably put on the suit and say he's Batman. Uh, won't be the same. Not to mention that this movie's soundtrack uses musical cues from some of the most famous Batman and Superman movies. 
While this movie wasn't for me personally, I wouldn't necessarily recommend against watching it. If you're a parent and your kid wants to watch Batman, sit him down and show him this. It's not the worst place to start. But if you're a Batman fan and you're looking for new recommendations, maybe skip this one. Or watch at your own risk. So if you like this video and want to see more LEGO Batman content on this channel, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, We're not going to call Superman. With all that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.